Four rounds, one to go in the Sanyuan Action Racing Series. Todd Prugene leads, but it's all about double points, double enduro, as we head to Pukekohe Park Raceway for the final showdown to see who will be the champion. BNZ in association with LDV, Hankook, Elf and BGW proudly present the Sanyon Action Racing Series. And the perfect scene, Pukekohe Park Raceway for the final showdown the Sanyon Action Racing Series. It's the power circuit, but of course it's all about two 90-minute enduro races to decide who is going to be the Sanyong champion for 2018, 2019. And if history repeats, it's all about the pit stops and the driver combinations like Mighty Matt and his co-partner, the other Mighty Matt. Let's take a look at how they ended up with qualifying for the opening race. And it's the combination of Christina Orr-West and Rowan Shepard in car 55 on top of the grid, followed by Matt Gibson and Matt Griffin. And then Kirk and Jake Stoneman, along with the current leader, Todd Prugene, teaming up with Kane Barry. Lots of other combos to watch out for, and of course, single drivers as well. Joining us, top motor racing commentator Mark Pedersen, ex-driver as well, knows all about the, the Sanyuan Action Racing Series. And uh, Mork, it's, it's all about the driver combos. And if you look at the starting lineup, it's interesting. Christina Allwest and Rowan Shepard with Christina behind the wheel. Three wide down to turn one. Pukekohe, what a way to start at a Giro, mate. They're off to a sprint start. You're exactly right. <laughs> Crazy. Look at that. Three wide around turn one. Never ceases to amaze me, Brownie. Here we are at the beginning of a 90-minute race, and they all think it's a two-lap sprint race. <laughs> but in saying that, we know how competitive all these uh, competitors are. There's a lot of formidable competitors in your course, and at the end of the day, there is a championship at stake. So you do have to stamp your authority early, and we didn't, uh, wasn't disappointed by three wide into turn one, were we? And, of course, history repeating itself. Um, Peter Bennett. Last year's champion, he took all that momentum into the two enduro races. Remember, in race one, they're racing on the supercar circuit, so they've got the complex for the first 90 minutes. And then in race two, they go back to the old style Pukekami oh. circuit. Oh, there's our first crash, didn't take long. Good recovery though for number 40. Take a look on board to see what happened. Chris Quinlan with the Aussie driver searching for a breaking point. Never cease to amaze it. When you go down the back straight, everybody else has stopped. You think you can make up six uh, you places under braking. It, it never happens. So, um, unfortunately, a couple of innocent victims there. But look at this battle at the front here, Brownie. As we say, the cream always rise to the top, don't we? And exactly what we're seeing now. Now, Christina, she's teamed up with... With Rowan Shepard, we know Rowan, he's been the bridesmaid in this championship for three or four times, and he would dearly love to be able to assist Christina to win this championship. So, you know, albeit it's a 90 million euro, there's a lot at stake. When I took a look at the teams, you've got to say that that combination of Christina Royal West and Rowan Shepard, straight away one of the strongest combinations to watch out for as we take a look at the LDV bird's eye view of turn one at Pukekohe. And of course, along with the likes of Todd Prugene, Kane Barry, Kirk, Jake and Kirk Stoneman, so really good combos. But it's all about the pits. That's where Peter Bennett won the championship last year. Remember, the pit window opens after 30 minutes to 60 minutes. And it's all about how quick they can make that driver change with the two-driver combo and how long they're going to be held in the pits for the one-driver combo. Yeah, so what they've actually done this year, and it's actually quite a cool incentive or initiative, I should say, it's not really an incentive at all, is that irrespective if you're, if you're a one driver you, or you, you know, you've got a couple of drivers having a crack at this, when you come in, they're gonna stop you in your pit box for 45 seconds. So what it does, it stops the one driver having to get out, run around the ute, get back in again, and it's all about safety these days. So if you've got two or three utes coming down pit lane and you're getting out ute running around, it, it takes out any risk of anything happening in pit lane. Very smart move, um, but then it becomes a, a bit of a timed, event so you don't gain anything in a pit stop and there again you can't lose anything in a pit stop so that's one of the other changes from last year no longer you have to get out and actually run around the ute you're just basically held in the pit lane for that 45 seconds and or just a quick driver change but that's what peter bennett said last time was all about how quickly they could make that driver change to minimize the time you're actually losing the pits 
Yeah, those guys were lightning last year. I think at the time it was 12 and a half seconds, and that could vary down to 30 or 40 seconds for some of the unpracticed teams. So, you know, that, that's where you could make up an awful lot of time. But that's been taken away, so now it's going to come back just to the commitment and dedication of the drivers. Great shots. The iconic turn one of Pukekohe rolling into the ripples, and now the GJ Gardner corner. Of course, the old cash dollars, they get that entry onto the back straight, and this is all where you get that speed here at Pukekohe. But fantastic on board there about how big and bold and brave you have to be around turn one at Puki. That's right, and you've got to keep the momentum going at Pukekohe. Look, this is a ballsy comment on my part, but this is the best track in New Zealand, if not Australasia, in my opinion anyway. It's got everything. It's got fast corners, it's got slow corners, but the amount of bumps, you have to show this track the respect it deserves, and this is a living, breathing beast here, Brownie, this track. Today it's very hot, it's very humid, and there is probably some of the worst conditions as in terms of the driver or someone setting the car up as you'll ever come across. And what happens when the track gets hot, it actually lifts in some areas, it then creates a bump, and then you hit those bumps at full speed and you've got to be committed to try to tame this beast called Pukekohe Park. And I just wonder, for those who are doing it solo, the effect of the humidity. I mean, it's going to be hot inside these utes anyway, but when it's hot and sweaty along with the humidity, I just wonder how draining it could be for people who are trying to do it all by themselves. Well, I can actually tell you that, Brownie, because I had first-hand experience. It doesn't matter if you're a professional athlete or if you're just a weekend warrior, like we've got a mixture of both in this category. It's like sitting in a sauna for 90 continuous minutes with no air breeze because of part of the championship rules say so you're not allowed to wind the windows down. They have no air conditioning. They have no cold air boxes like you um, have in the supercars. And at Pukekohe here, you have no time to break. All that you go down the back straight here, Right, you might get 10 seconds to yourself, but you're already strategizing. How am I going to get past this person? What am I going to do to get to the hairpin? Your brain has no chance to physically slow down from all the activity. This is grueling, irrespective, like I said, if you're professional or not. When you get out of these, when some of these drivers get out of these utes, they are going to be exhausted. These are the worst conditions. There is no reprieve. It is just plain horrible. So it's a big, challenging day. I don't know about you, Mork, but when I'm driving in my road car, I like to have the aircon blowing onto my face. It just keeps me cool behind the wheel. But of course here you've got no air con, so man, it's just going to be hot and sweaty. Well, yeah, it is. And the safety category, sorry, the safety requirements state that you've got to have um, no mix un underwear on. So that's if there is a fire, you've got a couple of layers before anything happens to you. You've got to wear balaclavas under your helmet. Then you've got a, a, a three layer race suit and then you've got everything. So the only way I can describe this is go and put three layers of pants on, three layers of woolen tops on, go and put like a, a woolen beanie on, go and sit in your car, put it on full hot on recycling mode, and you sit in there for 90 minutes and see how hot it gets. That's what these drivers have got to operate through. So you're losing your weight? Or you sweat a fair bit out, absolutely you do. So it's a bit like for Murray Brook, watch out for one of him as the uh, the star drivers as a single driver. So you've heard of Solo, a Star Wars story. If this is the LDB bird's eye view, this is Solo, a Sangyong story. Who's going to be able to handle it? The single drivers or the double combo? The other important factor in all this, Brownie, is for those single drivers, it's called dehydration. Now, they're locked in the ute, as we explained a couple of minutes earlier, the environment they've got to be in. But the minute your mouth goes dry, dehydration's already set in, and it's very hard to overcome it. Some of these guys are going to be in there for 90 minutes, and I don't see a great deal of drink bottles or whatever. So what happens is you get dehydrated, the adrenaline kicks in, that only carries you for so long, and then you physically run out of energy and you get depleted, and that's when the mistakes set in. Now, make no mistake, or well, these videos we watch, the images we see now, these are just as hard to drive as any supercar in these conditions. But keep in mind, they've got cool suits, they've got drink bottles, and they've got um, cold air coming in. These drivers have none of that. So it's all about the enduro. It's going to be fast. It's also going to be about fatigue. Stick around. The pit stop's not too far away. Welcome back, Sangyon Action Racing Series, and here's Murray Brook, one of the championship contenders. Love to know what the yellow tape is around the middle of the steering wheel. I hope that's, oh, okay. What it actually is, is actually, it's taping some kind of timing device. So you see right in the middle there, so that's, um, that's his way of basically having a bit of communication with the outside wheel. 
Talking about cream rising to the top. Watch out for that uh, combination, the cream insurance car. Of, we've got Mark Mallard and Peter Vodanovich, and of course you've got uh, James Watson and Jason Lefting. So really good racing combos. And a big challenge for those single drivers. I suppose the other thing we'll forget about is the fact that as we take a, another great shot from the LDV bird's eye view showing you how you come out of turn one at Pukekohe is you've got a 90-minute duro for race one. You have a bit of rest and recovery. You've got to go back and do it again. Yeah, look, there's only an hour, an hour and a half break in between the two 90-minute enduros. So it's um, you know, not only you've got to battle the heat and all the conditions and other competitors in 90 minutes, You've got to redo it again, and these are some of the most toughest conditions that we've seen before these guys and girls will ever experience. Then, of course, there's the combos of who, who you put in the car first, what sort of setup you tweak your tyre pressures to, to then come on to the end of the race, or do you, you know, can you change it in the pit stops? And then, of course, you're going to probably have to change your tyre pressures for the last enduro anyway. So there's a real different sort of setup, Pat. Yeah, and of course, keep in mind that the second enduro is on a completely different, or so it's the same circuit, albeit the background on the right-hand side with the, the signage, the cars will come straight through there. So that's another part of the equation too. And you have to take out that complex, so you're back to straight out, good old-fashioned power. As we go on board, Murray Brook again. Uh, these just absolutely incredible footage and images we're getting here. Murray's kind of the meat in the sandwich, what do I do? Do I go outside, do I go down the inside? I think he's going to do the bump draft here. That's what he's going to right now, just driving hard into the... <laughs> Isn't that awesome? The cream uh, teammates in front, Watson lifting, Mallard, <laughs> Vodanovic. Look at Murray Brook muscling his way through round turn one. That's Pukekohe. That's what oh. I love about this place. But that's great driving. It shows you just how good this series has been in developing oh, oh. driver skills, as we just talked about it. The commentators, <laughs> kiss of death. <laughs> Classic. Uh, and it's just driving on a knife edge and it just takes one moment of misjudgment and the, so it didn't hit the tyres, look they'll regather again but unfortunately because of this group this thing's got the momentum and it's very very unlikely we're going to see any safety cars here because it's such a big wide flowing track it's going to be hard for them to come back from that. Jake and Kirk Stoneman out in front, 22-44, Prugene at the wheel, the championship leader. Christina Raw West starting first in group number 55. So lots of experience, lots of battle-hardened racecraft leading this opening enduro. Double the points, remember, so double the pressure. And I suppose from the driving point of view, double the excitement, perhaps? Or just double the fatigue? Just double everything, actually. <laughs> but I think Murray broke out of this top combination, so Murray's one, two, three, currently six, the Blackheat just gone out of um, the image there. So just about to come in the view right now. He, is the first one to have been doing it by himself, so you know he'll uh, he'll be doing it tough. There's no doubt, and because he's not quite in the battle pack and he's almost defending, you've got to do all that hard work to get on the trail end, so the tail end of the of the trail. So when you fall by yourself and you've got no one to to really race with, you almost become a bit of stagnant about what you're doing. You don't quite know when you should be braking, don't quite know when you're accelerating. But when you're in a, in a group of traffic, you know when to stop is when the other in front of you stops. You know when to accelerate when they got out of the way. So being by yourself in no man's land sometimes can be just as hard as it can be being, being buried right in the middle of the pack. And it's all part of that guessing game of the big enduro finish here at Pukekohe. Sangyon Action Racing Series. A fantastic way to decide who will be the champion. It's all about the patience. It's all about the power. But it's all about the perseverance under pressure. That's why they've got the Enduros. And the, oh, was that a bit of a hit there? Or was it just, um, you can assign Hey, the other factor too, Brownie, is that they're not allowed any outside communication here. And that's why we saw Murray Brook with that bit of race tape with the, um, with the timing device in the middle. So I know what it was like with the drivers. When you're doing Enduro and, and things do get a bit stale or get a bit stagnant, is you can actually start talking to the team. You know, and I used to sing back to them and crack jokes or whatever it is, but you don't have that luxury. So that's also part of the mind game is that it's just you, the you, um, and there's rather hot conditions around Pukekohe Park. It'd be a bit like Top Gear too, mate, because they'll be talking to themselves. You know, like when they're doing that, uh, those, those hot laps on, on Top Gear, the ordinary car, that sort of jazz. There'd be a lot of drivers be, come on, come on, keep going, keep going. You know, keep pushing themselves. We're on target, we're on target. Not too far away from the pit stops, 27 minutes, only three minutes to go before the pit window 
open, so it's all about the strategy, the tactics, so they'll be, you know, hopefully talking themselves up, keeping themselves focused, because as, as the fatigue sets in, that's when you start, as you say, the mind games start playing up and you start perhaps making mistakes. Oh, absolutely. <clears throat> it is. But the, the other factor as well, and there will not be one driver that has not raced in New Zealand that doesn't talk to themselves. And if someone ever candidly put a microphone under your helmet <laughs> and then you replay back what you say saying, you realise how much of a muppet you looked at it went live. The, the bad thing is when you start answering back. <laughs> well, it happens. <laughs> Got to say, great racing. Look at this. This is a 30-minute enduro for now. You've still got another hour to go. Look how close they are. Well, One, two, three, four, five, six, seven newts. And this back, becomes back to back. Yeah, and this becomes part of the strategy now. So if you've got a driver, you know, when you have two drivers set up, if your primary driver is one or two tenths quicker than the second driver, you're going to hold them out for as long as you possibly can to take advantage of that extra speed the other driver carries. But if you're buried right in the middle of the pack, let's say fourth or fifth, and you know that you've got a little bit more speed then what you do is you'll come in it immediately as soon as the track um, as soon as the pit lane opens do your driver change over and then you're actually in clean air and then you can have an honest crack at it for five or six laps or however long it takes for the competitors to come in to do their pit stop then when the race settles down or gets on corrective time you can get the undercut we hear about that in supercars all the time and the same thing can happen here very easily battle scarred number 44 you Todd Prujing the championship leader Got some stuff hanging off the side of that ute. The Stoneman ute out in front, 22, followed by Christina Raw West. It's interesting talking to Todd. You know, they really rate that very experienced combo of Jake and Kirk Stoneman about building the utes and racing the utes. And here they are really showing what fierce and fast competitors they are by laying down the challenge and leading at the moment. Matt Gibson and Matt Griffin, also another good combo. Number 177, Foster. He's been great this year as well, number four. So they're heading into that hairpin. The question is, from a strategy point of view, from a tactical point of view, who is going to go into the pit lane first? And are we seeing the first move here? 55, Christina Raw West. Look at that for perfect timing. 30 minutes, the pit lane window was open, and she is in the lane to make the first of the pit stops. Smart move, Brownie. Get her out of the traffic. Get her back into clean air. Question is, is it going to pay dividends for her? Stick around. We'll find out. Welcome back to the Sanyon Action Racing Series. The first pit stop, 30 minutes. Christina Raw West, will she make the change over to Rowan Shepherd? Yes, she will. So Christina's out, the motoring mum from Edgecombe. She's been an icon of New Zealand motorsport, fantastic. And of course, Will All, the old man. Meanwhile, back out on track, the Stoneman still dominating the race, followed by the mighty Mats, Gibson and, and Griffin down the inside. The cream rising to the top. There's the cream insurance car with the combo of Mark Mallard and Peter Vidanovich. Good stop. It is, and that was that 45 second hold which we covered off earlier in the show. So what you got is when you come into pit lane, you cannot go any faster than 40 kilometres an hour. And at some stage during the, um, the whole process coming out pit lane, there is a radar gun. And I know we spoke about this in some of the earlier rounds, but what you do as a driver is you find out exactly where the radar gun isn't, and at that time, you normally go a little bit faster than what you're allowed, just to make sure that you're actually back under the speed. Oh, look at that. <laughs> that's, what, that's what happens when the bump draft oh, goes a tear Oh, hang on to it. Oh, wow, oh. most power circuit, Pukekohe. Oh, so that excellent. Super Sanyons. What a way for Pucci. Oh. oh. Couldn't happen at a worse time, obviously, because we're getting near the uh, the pit stop side of things. But man, that's just impressive, wasn't it? Both completely sideways, and here is one heck of a bump, which we spoke about earlier as well. And that's raised by the um, by the humidity. It's just the track goes up. It's not a criticism. It's just this fantastic venue. But it's what happens: two Utes bump drafting each other, get caught out. Oh, man, that was spectacular. Let's take a look. Tire screeching. Look at the hard work behind the wheel. Good. Hang on to it. Oh. 
left, right. Got doing 10 rounds of Mike Tyson, isn't it? Hey, did left, right, right, left. And look how smooth he was coming out of the back straight. Yeah, it looks as we can. That was, man, that was one impressive save, I've got to say. Oh, riding the ripples. And here's Charlotte Ponting, who was going to be teaming up with uh, Alexandra Whitley, but Whitley's having a bit of a break this weekend, preparing for the W Series. So Charlotte's doing it all by herself. So the first of the uh, the mighty mats coming in, Griffin handing over to Gib Gibson. Or is it Gibson handing over to Griffin? I'm not sure who's actually in the, in the car starting up first. Either way, charge into the pit lane there. Uh, that um, second cream, he's fast, eh? That's um, certainly taken advantage. And this, is the, and this is the luxury about the 45 seconds, right? Is that there's no pressure, bit of a chance, have a bit of a chat. Chelsea Herbert there out of the B and T V eights helping Charlotte. So women in motorsport doing a, a great job. It's a fantastic thing to see. Um, now just correct me now. The single utes are held for 45 seconds, right? Yes. Yep, Triple that's seven utes away. So even in the double, if they do a driver change, so Leafing and Watson doing their change now, are they still held for 45 seconds as well? Yes, they are, correct, yeah. So there is no advantage or disadvantage now of having two drivers set up. But you just got to be able to make your change within 45 seconds. Yeah, but to be honest with you, if you can't do it in 45 seconds, you probably need to look for another sport. So away they go. I wonder you know, if this is an honesty thing or an official thing, because if it's an honesty thing, just make sure how honest everybody's going to be. What's interesting, though, is that it seems that it, the time to do a complete lap is exactly the same as it takes to come into pit lane, do your driver change, be held for 45 seconds, and then come back on the track. So it's almost like normal business is resumed straight after the pit stops. I'll tell you what is even more interesting, the fact that, that the combination of Christina Royal West and Rowan Shepard, they were the first to make the pit stop at 30 minutes, and remember, they came out in front of the field. So they've already got a good lead. The other ones, some of them like the likes of Stoneman and, and co, they've got to make their pit stop. That's correct, but on corrective time, that you that we just seen go out a picture, Christina Orr, she's almost a lap down. So it's not until everybody's done their pit stops and then we get to find out the natural, or sorry, the true order of the business on the track. So, I know. Oh. <laughs> They had the curb sideways, gathering the forts, carrying on. Because hey, this shoot had Jason lifting. Oh, no. A little bit sideways. Just all that hard work undone. And, and it's what we're saying about the senior newts. It only takes a blink of an eye and one mistake. You miss one breaking point. Yeah, and then you lose two spots just like that. <laughs> and it looks it's like in rallying. You make one mistake in one corner, three or four corners down the track, you pay for it. Now, coming in, OK, what you're going to see, you're going to see a very dark yellow line right there. And now we're going to see a very faint white yellow line, which is right there. When you get to the faint line, you have to be down to 40 kilometres an hour. So you can go any speed into that merging lane, so long as you're down to the 40 kilometres an hour. It's got both side mouldings hanging off. There's not a great deal <laughs> left on that ute, which I think other than the roof panels are not bent <laughs> by the looks of things. What's going on there? It's just fast, competitive, semi on action racing ute. Racing. Pushing the limit. This is the Enduros, remember? This is phase two of this 90-minute. Opening race, back-to-back, 90-minute -back, Enduros. As we take a look, will they have a chance to actually get some duct tape on and tidy up that new number 44? Yeah, no, I think I'll just leave it. Unless the officials tell you to do something, Brownie, you don't get involved in anything else. Because um, if you start putting race tape on, it's going to be held. Just make a quick wire out of it. it off. And away they go. There you go. There you go. So Kane Barry getting in. I'm pretty Todd certain... Bridging the... getting out. I'm pretty certain to say that those two bits they take off won't have much aerodynamic... Um, <laughs> when I said the aerodynamic efficiency of the Ute whatsoever. So the Stonemans, still out there, 22. They haven't blinked yet. Will they be... The, this is the phase, that second phase. So we've had a 30-minute setup phase. Now it's going to be a 30-minute pit window. Oh, oh, locking up. Yeah, but time. they've gone to the wrong line. That's the line there that you have to slow down for. So all of that was just theatre for no and reason whatsoever. So it's all about now getting these pit stops done and dusted over the next 30 minutes. And then our final phase of this opening 90-minute enduro is going to be the big sprint finish home. And that's going to be the big challenge as Kane Barry, lots of extensive experience in motorsport. He's been down to that Leadfoot Festival down at Ha-Hay as well. So now he's onto the flat track, no longer the driveway. Trying to drive it home though. If, if I, I was calling the shots on the, on the 22 you to the Stonemans, I'd actually bring that in this lap because he's starting to get a bit of pressure from Mark Mallard and Co. 
So this is number 30, Murray Brook. He's flying solo. Now, what was interesting there is that I did not see one person try to go alongside of the ute and immediately stop and try to give him some water or any kind of form of rehydration, which we spoke about earlier in the show. So uh, it's one of those things, not knowing what's going on. So he's asking to tell me when it's 45. Making adjustments to what, the cooler seat in the back? What are they doing? Maybe, maybe, just maybe he does actually have a drink bottle set up and maybe that's what they're looking at. They couldn't see any straw going to the helmet, but that doesn't mean that it's tucked away somewhere and he just puts it in his mouth on demand. So, yeah, quite possibly, but... So that rehydration is what you were talking about, absolute key to keeping these drivers focused. Oh, especially if you do it by yourself, absolutely. Especially in these conditions because, you know, it's 28 degrees, so that means inside the unit it's going to be anywhere between 45 and 60. And there is no cold air. None. Zero. So 71 coming into the pits. Recovery truck's nice and quiet at the moment. Been really good, clean, hard, fast racing. One of the actual features of the Sangyong Racing Series. Exciting one-make motor racing and really developing into a great way to learn race craft. Now it's all about the battle of pit lane strategy. It is, but because you've got the 45 seconds, you can take a fair bit of time to do everything right. You're not rushing, you're not going to, you know, not put the seat belts on properly because there's also going to be a, an official there making sure that you put the seat belts on top of your Hans device, which is the, the head and neck safety system. That's the bit just under the back so of the seat, just under the helmet there. Peter Vidanovich jumping out and Mark Mallard jumping in. Vidanovich, of course, a lot of experience in the Toyota 86 series. And the other thing too, Brandy, which is, which is a significant factor for a driver, is that... You know, Mark Mallard, pretty robust, sturdy fella, and you've got Peter that jumps out of you and he's like a jockey. And you have difference in setup. You, you, the seat belt set differently, the seat to the steering wheel, to the pedals is different. And for a driver, that's actually a huge deal, because if you're not quite comfortable in the car, you're not confident in the car. And without confidence, you don't get a great deal of lap time. So the pit lane window is now about to close. So in the next couple of minutes, we're going to see the true corrective order and see who's one with the overcut, who's one of the undercutters here in supercars, etc, etc, but it's a real thing, and this is going to be neat, next couple of laps going to be fantastic. So we know that the, the red dude on the left hand side, the Milan one, that was leading the race when it come in, Christina Orr, which Ooh, there, there they oh. are, there's Christina Orr, it's actually Rowan Shepard behind the wheel, and the Stoneman combination has got back out in front of them, so now the race is on, this is part three. We now hit the one hour mark, 60 minutes out of the 90 minutes, and now it's a 30 minute sprint race. That could have been a defining moment in this race, the aggressiveness that um, 22, I guess it's Kirk Stoneman in there now, to get through that traffic with everybody, because it would have been very easy for him to back out, just go line of stern coming on the back straight. But then of course you've got Christina, or around Shepard I should say, he's on a march. He's got momentum gone by being in that ute for five or six laps more than Kirk. So Kirk had to do that move right there and then, or maybe a little bit aggressive just to stamp his authority, get in the rhythm, get the momentum going. What about your tyre wear now? It won't be part of the equation that, that these tyres will last all day, every day. And a matter of fact, there is some rumours that some of the teams are actually buffing the tread off the tyre to give it more mechanical grip. So that won't be an issue unless it rains, then it's going to get interesting. So now it's all about a power game, positioning game. Christina Raw West started, handed over to Rowan Shepard, Jake Steinman handing over to Kirk Steinman. I would think Rowan Shepard's actually going to have a look right down the inside at the start-finish line on Kirk Steinman here. He's got the momentum, took a different line, put fourth gear early. Now that is very smart, mature thinking, using the torque of the engine. Now what can he do? He's got speed, he might not have track presence though. Oh, around the outside, turn one, beat ball, brave move. Brings it back in line for the running over the ripples. And, and, and that, that was just a perfect illustration. Oh, Kirk, sideways. Oh, he's yeah. made the mistake. He's forced, forced the error. Great driving in the old rear view mirror. Yeah, but that, that was actually created by his track presence. Round the outside. On turn one. He, yeah. he went in to be defensive. Yeah. And at that stage, he just got, he lost momentum. Sorry, not lost momentum. He had too much momentum, which put him far too right for turn two, and that's a result of what happens. That was just fantastic pressure by Rowan Shepard. Yeah, just, just, I'm here, I'm here, I'm round the outside, oh, where are you? Bang, forced right. the mistake, didn't he? That's right. And that's what we were saying earlier, Brownie, you've only got been one or two inches off the apex of the corner, and that's the result. That, that's just the knife edge that everybody's racing on in these utes. 
end all. So a new driver just jumping straight in and, and straight away you're in the hot seat, literally on a hot pace and a race pace that the other guys had two or three laps to get used to. Yeah, look, the, the experience of Kirk Stoneman and matter in fact anybody else that's getting into the ute now that's actually already done the, the championship, this to them is like the first two or three laps in qualifying. You've got to jump in, you've got to crack on as hard as you possibly can, but you don't exactly know what you've got under you. So those two or three laps are basically pioneering laps, and after that you come right. So it's all about getting it dialed in and then hooked up. Yeah, you, you just got to know, okay, well, I've just got in this, but the, 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 my co-driver was doing this, so I should be able to do the same. Doesn't necessarily mean you can, but you've got to try to get the confidence to prove you can. That was a good move, that fast Great one. move down at turn one. That straight down the inside, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Saying that, that, that the, the lap car that we just saw, that, that's got Farhad in it. He's still trying to find his position, you know. He's brand new to the championship this year, so he won't have as much speed as the competitive guys in front. He'll get there in time, it's just he's new to everything. So down the back straight. Opening race, the championship decide on the Sanyon Action Racing Series. We've seen some great action so far, and we've seen some real good racecraft and real good pressure. Down towards the complex, under the brakes. Nice passing move down the inside. Stick around, who's going to make the winning pass? Welcome back to the Sanyon Action Racing Series, and this is it, the run home to the finish. Lap traffic in front of the two contenders in the lead of the race as we update the situation. So you've got the Van Der Luce and Kane Lobb 96 car, followed by the Fawcett Faha 777 car. But there's Murray Brook, number 30 in the black ute, the roofing industries car, and he's snuck in front of Rowan Shepard. So yep. he's grabbed the lead. I tell you what, all I can say is that given that everybody had to be held for 45 seconds, his laps preceding before he went in, he must have had a, a one heck of a charge to pick that much time up because we know these officials are in the pit lane, they're the ones that say where you can go. So look, we know Murray from the previous rounds. He is a genuine championship contender. He's not there by default. He's there through effort, hard work and commitment. Um, and this is going to be one heck of a battle. 15 minutes to go and we know they'll go side by side, corner for corner, lap after lap until that checker flag is showing. Two by two, up and over the final big hill. One of the iconic corners of Pukekohe. Here they are down that main straight. Isn't it ironic as we go on board? Murray Brook, number 30, your race leader at the moment. Of course, we've only got to go back a, a year or so. <clears throat> and that there. So oh, that down score. the inside, Shepard sneaks in. Great passing move at turn one. Oh, man, that's hard. Trying to do the beard out. Can't. Isn't it amazing, Mork? The more things change, like you've got an enduro race rather than a sprint, you've got drivers coming in, things remain the same. Suddenly, the championship contenders, the likes of Rowan Shepard and Christina Raw West, Murray Brook, Todd Prugene, Kane Barry, those same drivers who've dominated the four round sprint series are now in contention here in the enduro. Oh, it's the, the cream always rise to crop, as we said before, and we'll probably say again, and this is going to be one ding-dong of a battle. We've only got a number of laps to go. And you've got to only rewind yourself back one or two seasons. This track and this enduro was Murray Brook's first ever win in the category. So he's got form. He knows how to win these races. The only thing that puts a question mark in my mind is it's been so hot for 90 minutes, does he have the, the mental exertion to carry on? And can he take out race one and then back that up with race two all by himself? The solo Sanyong stories we talked about. As where you've got Christina Raw West, who's refreshing in the pits now, Rowan Shepard, lots of experience in this class, knows all about these youths, knows all about being in a battle. And look at this, mate. We're coming up to about 90 minutes. And look how close and exciting the racing is. Turn it up. Oh, it's incredible, isn't it? And this is what I love about this category. And this, as I said before, and people look at me sideways when I say it, this category is developing the future stars of New Zealand motorsport, but also gives home for those drivers that are probably towards the, the tender years of the motorsport to go and have a bit of fun. But the commitment, irrespective of you coming through the ranks or you've 
you've been in the ranks for a long time, the commitment is unbelievable. I cannot emphasize how hard it is to go around turn one and one of these utes, like we've seen here side by side, it's the amount of commitment, Brownie, you just, I simply cannot explain how much commitment there is to do that. Well, if you listen to Mark Patch, of course, one of the series organizers behind the success story of the Samuel Action Racing Series, along with the Coopers and Co. It's all about momentum. And you've got to say that Murray Brook has been one of those drivers who's learned from these Enduros. He's taken that momentum into the series, and here he is on the verge of knocking on the door of trying to get a checkered flag win in the Enduro of Pukekohe. Oh, it is because they only have full speed. They don't have the biggest tyres. They certainly don't have the biggest brakes in the world. So you've got to learn to control all that, and you've got to keep the momentum going as well. It's because we've seen before, if you falter, you're going to get penalised. They're just going to jump on you. So you've got to keep the momentum going the whole time, and that's something that you have to develop those skills as a driver. You just don't go into a race category like this with it. You have to nurture those along when you're young. So, And that's what I say. This is why this category, in my opinion, is the best training ground we have. Spare a thought, too, for Todd Pregene, the series leader going in. We talked about double points. We talked about two oh. back-to-back enduro races. But here he is, Rowan Shepard. He's been a runner-up before. He wants to get rid of that monkey off his back. Now. And he's grabbed that lead for Christina Royal West and Murray Brook, one of the other series contenders. They're in the in the box seat at the moment as we're Prue Jean and Kane Barry back in third place at the moment. So another, perhaps a big swing in the championship decider. Now the LDV Ute, is this going to be part of the equation or not? No, he's pulled over. And... Vandaloos and Kane Lobb teaming up at the 96 LDV Ute. So they've done the right thing. Blue flags waving, the fast cars, the championship contenders. Five minutes, five minute sprints. Who's going to hold on? Will it be the 55 or will it be the roof improvement? Number 30 of Murray Brook. you got the Dale ITM car. Now, go back one corner. There was a significant moment. Rowan Shepard pulled out two or three youth car lengths over Murray Brook. It might not seem much in the pitches. But it breaks that slipstream. Exactly right. And then what it does, it allows Ian Rowan to start taking his natural lines as opposed to being defensive and then start building momentum. So it'll be interesting to see in the next two or three corners if Murray can close that gap or not. Here comes the uh, Prugene Kane Barry combo. Not quite as quick as the other ones at the moment, but still handily placed in that top three to maintain some points, double points. Of course, it's going to come down to the final, the final race. This is the end of that first enduro on board with the Mighty Matt combo of Gibson and Griffin. Matt Gibson behind the wheel. It's ringing the neck. Oh, oh. gearbox problems. Man, that's so brutal on, on the gearbox, what they're trying to do there. It's, um, look, it's a flat shift, so what essentially what it means is that the gear lever he just had his hand has a little bit of a load cell, and when you put it back, it, it momentarily cuts the engine out. What all that means is you basically just hold your foot hard on the throttle, you never lift off when you're changing gear. Second, third, see the gear flashing up on the right side of the dash wringing the neck out of this thing. Now on the top. No, okay, sort of. so it's, 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 it's not stuck. a driving induced thing, it's just no. shaking his head. He's, he's got an issue there. But you can live around here in third gear, you just could not let your mind trick yourself that you can't do it. Who's going to do it? That's the big question. Coming down to this very exciting sprint finish, opening 90 minute enduro, Sanyong Action Racing Series, some great action. Now it's all about composure. Bring it home. Check and play. Pressure. Yeah, it is, you know, and if Murray Brook wants to have an honest crack at this, he's got to try to somehow find the inner strength to close that gap down. Doesn't seem like much on the television screen, but trust me, when you're in that ute, it's, it's like an eternity. And of course, there's no radio communication, as you said before, so they are relying on good old-fashioned signs, lap signs and lap boards, aren't they? Exactly right, yeah, and that's if the team is actually doing that for them. If not, it's a pretty lonely existence inside there. Down the back straight. What a great sight. Rowan Shepard. He's got some good speed in that ute, the 55 ute. Murray Brook, you just get the feeling he's hanging on at the moment, don't you? Yeah, he's hanging on, but he's got to be ragged. He's got to drive past that 100% to try to close the gap down. And of course, when you do that, then you start using the tyres more, you start using the brakes more, and you start using yourself more to try to close that gap. And then what happens is you might make one or two Ute links gain, and then you might lose three come out of the corner because you've gone in there a little bit hard and miss your apex or whatever it is. And I think that's what we're seeing now. That gap is just increasing and increasing. So not long to go now, that's for sure. 
Well, at the start of the race, we said when you looked at the two driver combos, we picked the combination of Christina War West and Rowan Shepherd as the number one combo. And when you looked at the individual races by themselves, we picked number 30, Murray Brook, as the one to watch out for. And here they are, back to back, bumper to bumper, down to the line. And after 90 minutes, this is what you're hanging out for that last lap board. It looks like Rowan Shepherd, he's broken that slipstream big time. He has, an, and that's the advantage is having a fresh, very seasoned driver jump into you from Christina into Rowan. Being able to hit a mark is getting through the, the traffic all right, and you're just keeping that momentum going. And of course, but for Murray Brook, he saw that last lap, so I said, no matter what happens now, in a minute of 50 seconds, you're going to back to the finish of the race. So, you know, you can just throw everything you've got in the last seven corners in the hope that Ryan makes a mistake and you're hoping us close enough to capitalise if he does that. Well, we saw what happened last time when uh, Shepard put the pressure on the Stoneman combination. Big mistake around turn one. But you've got to feel that that combination of Christina Raw West and Rowan Shepard have been sort of really matching each other's lap times, which means you've got a fast driver to start and a fast driver to maintain that momentum, take it all the way to the chequered flag, is where Murray Brook, he can only back himself and believe in himself and just find the limit, sit on it, stay on it, and try and bring it home the best he can. Doing a great job. Oh, that's right. They're 55 years. You know, we know how competitive and how dedicated Christina is to her uh, motorsport. And Rowan Shepard, we don't have to say anything about Rowan Shepard. He's just one of the best that we've got. So on paper, you're right, Brownie. You, you can't think of any combination other than these two that is better. Well, it started off as one of the watch on the paper, but of course, you've got to do it on the track. And here they are. Christina Raw West started it. There she is. And it's our mate, Rowan Shepard. He's going to bring it home and take the checkered flag and win the opening enduro in the San Juan Action Racing Series. Great drive by Murray Brook coming home in second. And in third place, the championship leader, Todd Prugene, handing over to Kane Barry. So with double the points, double the excitement, double the pressure, Double the, the salute from Murray Brook. It'll all come down to the final race to decide who will be the champion. And what a great way to open up with the Enduro. All West and Shep attacking the win, followed by Murray Brook, Prujeed and Barry wrapping up the top three. Mallard and Vidanovic, Watson and Lefting rounding out the top five. So now it's all about the recovery before we go racing for the decider. And in the box seat, it's the combination of Christina Raw West and Rowan Shepard. Yeah, it's quite, quite fun to be back. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's, yeah, I miss the close racing. Um, and with the other stuff I've been doing over the summer, it's, it's, not, it's, it's close, but it's not as close as these cars. So uh, it's great to be back and great to have a result for Christina and give her a bit of a buffer for the last race of the championship. I knew that when Murray was in front of me and he had a couple of cars in front of him, um, I really had to sort of pick my moment right and not really get left on the outside. But um, made it stick and yeah, pretty awesome. Oh, it was very hard work. Um, we had some lap traffic that um, made it a bit easier for Rowan to catch me, but um, he was on fire and uh, couldn't catch it. I couldn't keep with him, but um, let's see the next race and hopefully my car's a bit better for that track. There's, there's plenty of guys got excited about doing the Enduros. Um, didn't take much arm twisting for me to come back. Good fun. So now it's all about recovering, regrouping as we get set for the final race to decide who will be the Sanyon Action Racing Series champion with one more 90 minute enduro to come. BNZ in association with LDB, Hankook, Elf and BGW proudly present the Senyon Action Racing Series. 